All right, you guys, we are going to be creating an avatar. So you're gonna open up Illustrator and I want you to choose letter just like we've done in the past and click create. So from here, we are going to um, create like an outside and then create our avatar in the inside. So the first thing we're gonna do is one, make sure we have all of our tools up on top here because I obviously don't have any. So if you don't have any, go to window, workspace and automation. So you may have to do that. When you do that, you get all these awesome tools up here and you get tools on the side. Um, I don't necessarily like all of this stuff, so I'm gonna take it away. So I'm gonna go to window and I am going to find libraries. I don't want that. I'm gonna go to window and find actions because I don't want that. I really just want my layers. So the first thing we're gonna do after you get all of that settled is just get your paper sort of centered on the page, scroll up and down with it, and then come to your rectangle tool and you wanna find your ellipse. <clears throat> We're going to make a big circle on our page. In order to make a perfect circle, you should press shift before you click and drag. So I'm going to press shift, click and drag, and make it pretty big. I'm actually going to make it a little bit bigger, so I'm going to go on the outside here. I'm going to grab my direct selection tool, which is the top pointer, and just move this to the middle of the page-ish. Okay. From here, I would like to make the stroke of the circle, which is the outline of the circle, heavier. So I'm gonna say six. And I'm also gonna have this have no color in the background, okay? So I upped the stroke and made this clear or see-through into the background. So that's gonna be where like we're making our avatar inside of this area here. The next thing I'm going to do Um, is I need to change how like it's put together. So I'm going to go, I don't know if I have it up. I need, oh yeah, I do. I think I have it here. Yep, okay. I'm gonna change the cap to a round cap. And what that does, it just helps us when we go to like cut, we're gonna cut some things later on. It helps us to make sure it has a clean end. So we want a cap and six. So you can also change the stroke from here too. So see, it's the same, same. Okay, all right, now we're gonna work on the inside. So I'm gonna go back to my rectangle tool and I am going to make a rectangle filling up most of the, most of the page here. I then want to round my corners, which sometimes is like a daunting task and we're like, ah, how do we do this? But if we take our direct selection tool here and we go to the, circle part right here and we bring it in. You see how my caps are coming in. So I'm going to bring this in till it looks like this. So I'm bringing it to the middle here and it's gonna stop because it can't go anymore or else it's gonna invert the shape and we don't want that. So you're just sort of going in to the middle right there. And then after that, we're gonna create some eyes. We're gonna go back over here and we're gonna grab our ellipse tool again. Again, you're gonna press shift and create an eye, however big you would like it to be. And then um, I'm gonna have this filled in black for right now. And then I'm going to do control C, control V Grab my pointing tool, my selection tool, and I'm going to come up. Hopefully you have this thing called snap to grid and it tells you like, hey, you are lined up in the middle. So see that pink line in the middle? It's lined up all the way. And that's what you want. And then, sorry, I'm looking over my notes. And then we are going to group these guys together. So you're gonna press shift. Make sure this, sorry, make sure one of them is selected. Then you press shift and click on the other one. And now the box is around them and we're gonna group them together. So you can right click and say group. Then we are gonna make sure that they are aligned. Um, but I'm pretty sure I don't have mine up. So if I don't have it, even if I do have it, I can always go to window align and I am going 
so I opened up my line and now I'm going to say a horizontal align center. So we'll have all of that together. And there you go, moved over to align to the center. Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it on my tool, on my palette tools over here. You can just take the top and click it and that little blue line will tell us that it's right there. I think my eyes are a little too high for my personal liking. I'm going to bring them down a little bit, which I should have brought them down before I lined them, but I think they probably stayed pretty center. I can fix them here in a little bit too. Now we're going to make our eye um, like lids or eyebrows, however you want to do them. So we're going to go to, back to the ellipse tool and press shift and make a perfect circle. I don't want it filled in, so I'm going to come here and make sure it's not filled in. I want to double check my stroke that it's at a, a round cap, and it is, which I think it should default to that. After that, I'm gonna to go to my direct selection tool. It's probably one of my favorite guys here. See how all of these points are filled in blue right now? I don't want all of them filled in blue because if I do that, then I manipulate all of them. I just wanna manipulate one of them. So if I click on one of my points, my anchor points, then the rest of the dots turn clear or white because there's white behind it. And then we have our anchor point here that is blue because that's what I clicked on. So I'm going to click delete or backspace and I'm going to click here and I'm going to click backspace as well. From here, I need to rotate that. So I'm going to go back to my selection tool, click until I get my, rotate it until I get my little guy here. And then I'm able ah, to grab it. Oh my goodness. All right, sometimes grabbing these little guides, it's not the easiest. There we go. And it looks like that eyebrow is a little small. So let's make it a little bit bigger here. And remember, you can angle your eyebrows however you would like, but just remember like they could make you look angrier. I don't know if I like that. I like that, I like that better. Okay, so they can make you look angrier or sad or surprised or whatever. So I'm going to put I'm going to select this and say control C, control V, and get another one. So copy and paste. And my little snap to grid is telling me that they are together. There we go. So we're going to do this again, and we are going to create the nose. So I'm going to take that, control C, control V. I'm going to bring this down to where I think my nose is going to be. And I'm going to make my nose a little bit smaller, so I'm bringing it in. And then again, trying to make it in the middle, in the middle there. After this, again, we can just, because we didn't really do anything else, I can do control V again, which is paste again. And I'm gonna make this my mouth. Oh, there we go. Uh, I guess you could leave it like that and be sad, but I hope you're not sad. And we're gonna take this and spin it around here. And I am gonna make my mouth wider than my nose because our mouth is naturally wider than our nose. And I guess it just depends on how happy you want to be. So there we go. That doesn't look too bad. The spacing looks okay right now. And um, we're just going to leave that for right now. And here is our face.